go, bring it up, baby. Let's go. Get up, get up. Yo, 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 what is good, what is good, what is good, how is everybody doing, how is everybody feeling, man, busy, busy day for the Raiders actually today, man, so we got some stuff to talk about, I'm actually pretty excited, you know, I just, just got back from work, man, had to bring on this live for you guys, so, whew, let's do it, let's do it, man, I'm excited, we got some things to talk about, like I said, man, the Raiders, they went on and made moves, they got some depth signings, so I had to bring this for you guys, um, let me know, is it, is it, is it buffering right now, is it buffering, or is it good, I think, I think it's buffering, but I don't know, I may be, I may just be tripping, um, let's see, Shout out to everybody who's already in here, man. We 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 got a lot of people in here already. Shout out to my guy Renato was good. We got Mark Armando was good. Joy Boy Ben Bad Raider Ross RCS. What we got Raider Cortez Brian. Uh, Joy Boy Brian again. Uh, Latina. Shout out to Latina. Salute. Sean Johnson was good. Antoine Tavio, my guy was popping. EJ Brian again. OG OG Fade Blue King. Who who shot me, bro? I don't even know who shot you, brother. <laughs> B was good. Snoops, RCS again. Red of Dangerfield was good with you, my boy. Dave, you good? I'm I'm chilling. You scra- Oh oh, you telling that the the thing is good. I right, appreciate you, brother. Um, was good with everybody. It's not buffering, bet. It's not buffering, bet. Bet bet bet. Um, is good. Uh, was good. You good? Perfect. 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 Hey, man, how y'all feeling about the? How y'all feeling about the news today? Right? I know everybody's kind of getting antsy. Right? We want the Stephon Gilmore. I want Stephon Gilmore. I want him too. But listen, you guys, we can't. We can't get too too impatient. At the same time, we we we've gotten a lot of guys. <laughs> like we've gotten a lot a lot of guys. Um, I I I really really want Gilmore, but. If we don't get them, it's it's really not the end of the world at all, like whatsoever, man. The Raiders are really trying to build a nice, solid roster. So if we don't get Gilmore, it is going to suck for maybe like, I don't know, 20 minutes, and then it's going to go by, just like J.C. Jackson. So um, I, I really want Gilmore. But what I want to talk about is all the things that we did today. We started off pretty damn hot. Um I'm 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 gonna go through them. I'm gonna go through them right now. I am extremely extremely excited. You guys may think I'm overreacting, but we brought Jermaine Illuminor back, man. That that is a big big plus. That is a big big plus. I love the fact that we brought back Jermaine Illuminor. In my opinion, if if they're thinking that Jermaine Illuminor and Brandon Parker is gonna is gonna be um is gonna be a battle, uh, a camp battle, if that's what they want out of those two guys. A camp battle, I think Jermaine Illuminor is gonna win. I think Jermaine Illuminor is gonna win, man. Brandon Parker, his his footwork just doesn't suit the right tackle position. Um, I, I, I gotta I gotta give it to Jermaine Illuminor, and I'm just very happy that we brought him back. Um, Jermaine Illuminor, the second we signed Josh McDaniels was extremely, extremely positive. So that's always good. You know, he said, give us some time, Red Nation. You guys will love the outcome. So he was the first one to speak about us going out and getting our our, our new head coach. Um, another thing I want to talk about is shout out to Marcus Mariota, man. Once a Raider, always a Raider. It was uh, it was a fun time having you on this roster. I wish we could have used you a little bit more. I wish we could have maximized your potential and possibly got you got, got you a better contract, Mariota. But shout out to Mariota, man. He got himself a nice little two year deal with the Falcons, just under nineteen million dollars a year. So um, shout out to Mariota, man. On to new things. Hopefully, he could become the starter over there at, in Atlanta. But you know. Shout out to Mariota. He got himself a contract. Um, good things coming for him. Now, the the big, not the big one, but the main news that kind of popped off in the morning was 
first, the Raiders had hosted uh, linebacker Micah Ki Ki Kaiser, Kisser, I think it's Kizer, more like that. Uh, I don't, I don't really know how you say his name. Um, we hosted him for a visit, and later on in the day, we actually signed him to a contract. So I do believe it's just a one-year deal. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm liking the signings, man. We're bringing in, we're bringing in depth. We're bringing in depth at a position of need. At the same time, he can kind of be that special teams ace, right? Uh, we we lost our special teams aces a couple years in a row. Kyle Wilbur, he was our special teams ace. Then he went, he left. He wasn't with the Raiders no more. And then after he left, Nick Kukowski was supposed to be that guy once he kind of got dropped down in the depth chart, but then he kept getting hurt. So we didn't have a special teams ace, but hopefully this guy right here, Micah, Micah Kaiser could be the, could be the guy can be the guy on special teams that can really be the glue of what we have going on over there. Then we went on and we re-signed Brandon Parker. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Brandon Parker a lot. I, I don't like him. I don't like Brandon Parker, bro. Um, I, I just don't. His technique is just not there for a right tackle. When he subbed in for Colton Miller at left tackle, it didn't look bad. But he is just not suited for the right tackle position. Um, now, like I said, if their plan is to make Jermaine Illuminor and Brandon Parker kind of battle it out for that spot, I think Illuminor will win. You know, Illuminor already had a season where he started with New England. I believe he started over 10 games with New England. So that's a good one, man. That's a good one. Um, so it is, it, it, it's, it's solid, man. It is solid. It is solid. It is solid. Um, let's see. Brandon Parker is trash. Hey, man, it, it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. But one of the sneaky signings, man, one of the sneaky signings of the day is, uh, Kyler Frackrell, pass rusher, outside linebacker. He's kind of like a stand-up rusher. Um, obviously he's depth. Personally, I didn't think that we were going to be in the market for another guy like this. You know, we went out and we got Chandler Jones. Personally, I think that Malcolm Kuntz can kind of be that guy that gets molded behind Chandler Jones. So I didn't really think that we were going to get Kyler uh, Frack, Frack Rell, but um, he's honestly not back like he is very very good depth if you're going to keep a guy in rotation he's a guy that's not going to be a liability in the run he's a guy that can get after the quarterback here and there um so i i'm 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 liking the depth that we're bringing in but like i said i thought that Kuntz kind of would have gotten that um that role i still think Kuntz can get that role but it'll just be a little bit tougher now he's got competition i like it i like that we're not giving anybody any guarantees even even guys like Kuntz, i definitely think that Kuntz could be better than frack Rell, but i'm glad that they brought in a guy like frack Rell to compete with Kuntz week in and week out for a for a for a for a heavy role in this defense so i like that right there man and shout out to jack he says this is a salute to all my brothers and sisters in the chat you too andy my bro with the laundry basket just a long time fan of your uh of you kid appreciate you man appreciate you the laundry basket that's crazy man the madden days um but but yeah so so we went out and we did this and then we had some breaking news i think right as i started the live we went out and we signed a, a tight end, Jacob Hollister, to a one-year deal. He's only 28 years old, six foot four, 240 pounds, has appeared in over 50 games in his career, starting 12, which is not bad. 83 receptions for 708 yards and seven touchdowns. Um, that's that's pretty decent, right? Uh, apparently, he's already been he's already been with Josh McDaniels before, I believe. They they started they started he started his career with Josh McDaniels in New England so there's that familiarity already there I'm glad that we were able to bring in a guy a familiar face that could possibly help teach the 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 way that tight ends need to work um, you know specifically a guy like Foster Moreau I feel like they could be in a similar role but. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yes, Jermaine. Uh, yes, the numbers. Jermaine Illuminor is back. Um, excited about that one. I definitely am. He was a solid, solid, solid um run blocker, pass blocker for the Raiders last year. I was a little disappointed in in our staff when we decided to bench Jermaine Illuminor last year, but um, he's back. You know, he's back with a familiar face, Carmen Brasillo, Josh McDaniels. Very, very happy that we were able to bring this guy back. Right. Um, personally. I'm just not too sure what what 
this roster or what this staff sees in Brandon Parker. But at the end of the day, if they do see something in Brandon Parker, um, then I'll sit back and let them go to work because they have had success with many players. Um, and shout out to Wasted Man. He was in the building. Was good with you, my guy. Um, Omar in here, he says, we need a linebacker, right tackle, defensive tackle, which we might get in the third round. Who would you get at the third round pick? Ridgeway, Kobe, Asamoah, Fa'alele um, might be might be there. So if Fa'alele is there, you got to look at him just because of the tangible sight. Uh, I mean, size, weight, frame, all that kind of stuff, right? With a good offensive line coach, he can mold him. It, it'll be a couple years, maybe three years. But he can be molded into a great offensive lineman. Um, and in the third round, I like the value there. I like the value there with Fah Lele. I was never really a big fan of going after him in the second round. I felt like that's just a major, major reach at that point. But we don't have a second round pick. And if he is there, if he is there in the third round, I wouldn't be mad at the pickup. But if there was also guys like Asamoah, Kobe Bryant, John Ridgeway there, and we went out with Fah Lele, I would kind of be a little uh, hesitant on – on being happy with the pick, but at the same time, I, I understand what they would go for. But personally, my third round, uh, um, I would I would try and attack the linebacker position. I feel like there's going to be a couple guys, possibly Darian Beavers, maybe a Brian Asamoah, maybe a Damon Clark. Now, if those three linebackers are on, on the board there, it's kind of tough, right? I feel like Asamoah out of those three guys is the highest ceiling. I think Damon Clark has a high ceiling as well. I think that both of those guys have a higher ceiling than Darian Beavers, but Darian Beavers has a higher floor. So overall, um, Darian Beavers is kind of like the guy that's most quote unquote pro ready. Um, so I wouldn't be mad at either of them, but I do want to get guys with high upside because I really do think that this scheme can get the most out of these free agents or not free agents out of these draft picks. Jacob says, would you trade back? Um, it depends. If we're talking about trading back five spots, gaining an extra fifth round pick, yeah, I would do that. But if you're asking me, would I trade out of the third round? No, I wouldn't. I think that where we're at right now, um, it's a good spot. We're in the sweet spot of every single round, you know, first and second round being in the middle. It's kind of like, ah, you know, the top of the top guys are there. You don't really want to reach quote, quote unquote on a guy that you can get 10, 15 picks later. So it's, it's kind of interesting, but you know, I feel like now we're kind of in that sweet spot of the draft where we're in the middle of each, each, each round now, um, you know, we got 86, we got 126, then we got 164, 165, and then we got 227, I believe. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in a good spot. I definitely feel like we can leave this draft with at least two starters, two starters, maybe even three, um, some good depth, some good, good depth and rotational guys. There's a lot of value in this year's draft. I just feel like this draft is very, very, very well balanced all across the board so that in this draft, maybe a guy that should be going in the fourth round um, that'll go in the fourth round this year, maybe should have snuck into the uh, early third round, right? I feel like there's just that much overall talent in this draft to to where, yes, we let go of a first round pick, we let go of a second round pick, but it's not going to be the worst because there's still going to be a lot of great talent out on the board there. Um, and I definitely feel like with the, with our first with our first pick in the draft being their third round pick, I definitely feel like we should go out and attack the linebacker position. Cause you know, I know we went out and we got uh, Micah Kaiser today and he he'll be fine. He'll be a special teams guy, special teams ace, hopefully um, a guy that can rotate in and out, probably play on the goal line at, in our goal line defense um, when we want a bigger body out there. But as as far as that, I mean, he's not a guy that's going to be a game changer, in my opinion. Who knows? He probably does have a lot of upside, but I, I would definitely go after maybe a linebacker with our third round pick um, or a defensive tackle. Right. If, if you know, a lot of people are mentioning John Ridgeway. I, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a, a, a strong fan of John Ridgeway at the third round. But, you know. The, the, the same thing with Falele, man, you see in John Ridge, Ridgeway, he, he's got the height, he's got the weight, he's got the, the, the tangibles, the measurables, he's got all that, right? And for a mid-round pick, it's it's pretty, it's not the worst in going out and getting somebody there, you know? So we'll see, we'll see. Um, He says, I think we get maybe one starter, a linebacker, or a defensive lineman. I, I think so as well, Ray tape. I think so as well. Shout out to my guy, Ray, in the chat. My guy. Um, Let's see. 
are we really not going to go with the new vet at right tackle? Who knows? Who knows, man? It's kind of weird. You know, re-signing Jermaine Alumar, in my opinion, was a good good signing. Um, but personally, I feel like our starting offensive line could possibly look like, you know, Colton Miller, Denzel Good at left guard, Andre James at center, right guard Alex Leatherwood, and right tackle Jermaine Illuminor, which isn't a bad offensive line, but it's also not really good at any stage of the offensive line besides our left tackle, right? Which is essentially what you want. You want a good left tackle, right? But um, it's pretty average across the board, right? So you can get by with it. You can definitely get by with it. Um, you can win games with that offensive line, but that offensive line can also still lose you games. It can still lose you games. So um, you, you still want to add somebody. I definitely feel like if we would have cut Denzel Good, we would have already done it by now. So um, I definitely feel like Denzel Good will be on this roster. So that that's that's what I think. Um, and shout out to my guy, Jose. He says, Andy, did you see that we signed tight end Jacob Hollister? I did. I already went through his stats, but I did that when it was like only 100 people in here. So we got over 150 more of you guys in here. So again, for those of you guys who did not know, we did just sign an, a, a tight end to a one-year deal. He's only 28 years old, Jacob Hollister. Um, hold on. He's six foot four, 270, 240 pounds, has appeared in over 50 games, um, starting 12 of them with 83 receptions for 700 yards. It's pretty, pretty decent with seven touchdowns. Not, not that bad. Not that bad, right? So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, it's depth. I feel like that's a guy that mo might possibly compete with Foster Moreau for for that maybe tight end two, tight end three. So 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 we'll see. We'll see. That's why we got Tay. What do you mean? We we got Tay because we need Tay. <laughs> High quality starting guards can be uh had in the third, fourth round of the draft. Easy. I agree, but at the same time, you know, we we used this is this is what's kind of tough about about John Simpson, right? In my opinion, getting John Simpson in the fourth round or third what was it the fourth or fifth round? That's that's a high investment for an offensive guard. Like you would hope that going into the third year for John Simpson, he would be a starter right now. Because when we're talking about interior offensive linemen, anywhere if you're using a pick between a, the top 150 for an offensive lineman, and in my opinion, that's a high investment for an offensive offensive guard. Um, so by year three, this should be the year that John Simpson should be starting. He should be starting and he should be good to go, but we just haven't gotten that out of him. You know, I understand that in his first year, we went from a power scheme and then last year, I don't know what the hell Tom Cable thought he was, but he tried to switch into his own gap scheme, right? Um, so it just didn't work. There's a lot of moving parts and it's not really a fair shot for Simpson, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's not good when you have to go on a search to find good film for a player, right? Because that just means that they're not consistent and consistency in this league is everything, right? So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And shout out to Carlos, man. He says, keep up the great work. Most definitely will do. Um, you know, you guys have been showing love and love and love and support to this channel like crazy. So appreciate you guys. I'm going to keep pumping out this content for you guys because um, you guys, man, you guys are super, super, super supportive to the channel, man. I love you guys. Foster got competition, most definitely. And and I think that we need to give these guys competition, right? The same reason why we went out and traded for Rocky Sin. It's competition for, for uh, Trayvon Mullen. We went out and then we got um, Anthony Averett. It's competition for both of those guys. So we need guys that want to come in and compete. We need guys that are going to earn. We, are need, we need guys that are going to Earn those freaking spots. Those roster spots are huge, man. They're not just handouts. So we need guys that will earn that. And shout out to my guy, Joey, man. He says, yo, 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 what's good with you, my man? Um, Raid the mofo tape. Fact. Shout out to my guy, JD. Shout out to Raid the tape, man. Um, are we stepping up our offensive line? Who did... Who did we get? Haven't been uh, keeping up. So, so far, um, the, the changes that have been made is that we signed a guard, Alex Bars. I believe he's a guy that's probably going to be 
camp body, um, possibly be cut before the season, or he'll be a guy that'll just be good depth, good backup. Um, so that was our first signing towards the offensive line. And then after that, it got real quiet. We went out and we uh, picked up, I believe, I think it was just today, right? We picked up Brandon Parker, we re-signed him, and then we re-signed Jermaine Illuminor. So that that's really that's really all that's happened so far. Um, what's up, Andy? I have more confidence in Simpson than Parker. First head scratcher player signing, in my opinion. I agree, Reddit yeah. Champion. I agree. Um, Parker is definitely a head scratcher. He definitely is, but um, I, I also agree with your statement in terms of having more confidence in Simpson than Parker. But personally, the only reason why I feel like I have more more confidence in Simpson than Parker is for, for one reason, and that's the fact that he's on the interior, right? He has help on his left side. He has help on his right side. You know, Brandon Parker is on an island out there on the right side. Um, he he hasn't he hasn't really been able to be a guy that can pick up on stunts, that can move his hips uh, fluidly, um, that that can change direction quickly. And at that right tackle position, it just doesn't suit him. So I definitely agree that that it's a head scratcher, one of the first head scratchers. Um, but who who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows? Um, hey, Andy, looks like the Gilmore ship has sailed. Honey Badger, um, ship about to dock. What do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm not too sure. I definitely know that the, the Bengals have, have popped up in the conversation now. Um, definitely, that's some big competition, right? The Bengals are a team that just went to the Super Bowl. They felt like maybe they were a cornerback and an offensive lineman away. Um, so it is, it is, it is some, some, something to look at, right? But at the same time, you know, we have been linked to him almost this entire offseason, and they're kind of just coming in. So hopefully we can still land Gilmore. But like I said at the beginning of the live, man, um, if we don't land Gilmore, I'm not going to be like some heartbroken motherfucker. Like it's it is what it is. Right. We, we got to get better regardless. You know, I, it sucked that J.C. went to the Chargers. But at the end of the day, we, we still have to go out and get better. So um, does Gilmore help the team immensely? Yes, he, he does. But. As of as of right now, if if there's another team that's gonna come in and offer him more money that that just doesn't make sense, I mean I don't really care. And as far as Honey Badger, it's kind of interesting, right? Because the Raiders, it's been rumored that the Raiders have entered now the conversation with the Honey Badger. Now, um, if you're asking me who I would prefer, I would much rather get Gilmore than the Honey Badger, but I would. I would not complain if we brought in the Honey Badger on this defense at all, like at all. And shout out to BB. He says, we signed three linebackers. I, I don't think we signed three. I don't think we signed three. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't think we signed three linebackers, bro. I think we signed. We signed one. We signed one. We only signed one linebacker, bro. I, I don't think we signed three. And it was just. It was really, it was really just the the one post of, um, of Mike Micah Micah Kaiser or something like that. I don't know if it's Kaiser Kaiser Kisser. I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know what it is. Um, let's see. Signed two shots to my guy Graf. Um, we signed we signed two. Who was the other linebacker? Oh yeah, the 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 edge rusher. But I don't really count Fra Frack Rell as a. As a as a linebacker, you know, he's a stand-up rusher. I get it. He can drop into coverage, but um, Frack Rail, I mean, I like Frack Rail, but, you know, I, I wouldn't really count him as a linebacker. Um, let me see. Somebody just sent me something in here. But, yeah, Kyler Frack Rail is low-key. Is what? Is low-key a nice signing? I agree. I agree. I like I like the signing. I really do. Right. He had that one crazy season with Green Bay where he where he had ten and a half sacks and then he kind of dropped back down to earth. But, you know, a piece to this team or he can be a valuable piece to his team. Um, so we 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 could definitely use his his skill set. Right. And um, it adds good competition. It adds good depth. I really, really want to see how him. And Malcolm Coons can battle it out in training camp because I feel like both of them will kind of battle for the same role, right? That that main rotational stand-up rusher, I feel like they'll both battle it out for that same role. Um, I definitely feel like he's further along than Malcolm Coons uh, against the run. 
But um, I think that Malcolm Kuntz in, in his second year can definitely take that next step. So there's there's that. Um, Raider Junkie says, what I miss about Honey Badger, really, really nothing, right? So it's 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 been rumored that the Raiders have now entered the conversations with Honey Badger. So like I just mentioned, I would much rather us go sign, sign Stefan Gilmore than Honey Badger. But at the same time, at the same time, man, I would love for us to get to get Tyra Matthew, right? You know, you pair him up with a guy like like Trayvon Merrick, those two guys are gonna fucking kill the game. Like they are going to kill the game on the back end, bro. Like they really, really are. So um as far as as far as going out and getting uh getting Tyra Matthew, wouldn't be my first option, but I would definitely, definitely like um like him, right? You know, it, it is what it is. Jack, I missed the super. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, yeah, my bad. My bad. Jack, he says, Andy, uh, or at Andy, the nation loves you, uh, loves a young guy like you because you talk about scheming systems. You need to connect with Raid. You two can break down the tape. Yeah, hey, man. So um, me, me, and, uh, me and Wasted, man, we had a fire show last night. We were breaking down tape of Rocky Sin, you know, recently acquired from the Indianapolis Colts. We went over every single defensive play of Rocky Sin last night, man. So um, if you guys like those film breakdowns, me and me and Wasted are definitely going to keep in touch with that because you guys really seem to enjoy that last night. So shout out to you guys um, that pulled up for that. Appreciate you guys, man. But definitely, me, me, raid. I feel like that that would be cool. I might have to, I might have to hit him up about that. That would be, that would be cool. Just depending on who we, who we do it on. But I think that would be fire. That would be fire. Abram is a as a hybrid linebacker. I feel like Abram um, is a linebacker. Like he needs to put on that weight to become a linebacker. I, I do not like his film at, at safety. Right, like it, it just doesn't make sense for him to be at safety. Um, it just doesn't suit him. What suits him is in the box, being able to react, make a tackle. You know, even if he misses a tackle in the box, there's six other guys that should be around the ball that can do the same thing, right? So um, we'll, we'll see that. But I, I don't want to see him at the safety position. In my, in my opinion, he's a liability there. He is. His coverage is, is, is bad. Like, it's not good. It's not good. So and this is coming from me, you guys. Like, <clears throat> I love Jonathan Abram. I love Jonathan Abram, but he's he's simply just a liability in coverage. It's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, shout out to my guy. He says, wipe them feet, man. Facts. Um, was good, was good. Uh, with you, Raider Solo was popping, man. Abram. Abram become a linebacker, going to punish running backs. It, it'll be nice, man. It'll be nice if he could do that. It'll be definitely, definitely nice if he could do that. Should the Raiders re-sign Deshaun Jackson? I mean, if he's willing to take that bet minimum, slide back over here to the dark side, man. But he's a guy that his name alone, Deshaun Jackson, his his name alone holds enough weight to where he he can go some, some to some bum place like, like fucking the Jets, and he, he can get paid more there, right? So – you know, it, it's it's kind of interesting. I would bring him back if it was close to the vet minimum or the vet minimum. But like I said, his name alone, I feel like, still holds enough weight um, in this league to where he could still get paid above the vet minimum. Um, Abram needs to gain weight. Yes, he does. He does. What's good with you, Chris? Was popping, man? How you doing today? Um, if Abram puts on 15 pounds, he would be a nasty will. I think 15 pounds would slow him slow him down a little bit too much. Um, 15 pounds in one off season, I think for one is suspicious and unnatural. I feel like some of the weight that he would have to add on that point would be unhealthy, but um, I, I definitely think that anywhere from eight to 10 would be good for, for Abram, you know, especially if it was more upper body, you know, where he has those injuries a little bit, but I would definitely like to see Abram at, at that, at that spot. Now injuries, I mean, it's definitely a concern with him if he stays at the same weight. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Hold on. My guy says, Jonathan Abram continues to improve his game, and John is the only killer we have on defense since Yannick left. Yannick, in my opinion, is not a killer, um, or he was not a killer. Um, Yannick was a guy that added value against the pass, but 
you know, against the run, I mean, teams would literally run towards Yannick Ngakwe's side just to just to gain yards. Like he 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 didn't he didn't help us when it came to the run. Like he he hurt us. He hurt us more than he helped us when it came to the run. So it just it just wasn't it just wasn't meant to be with Yannick Ngakwe and the Raiders. So yeah. It, it just it just doesn't make sense. Um, Chandler Jones is a killer. My guy says Perryman's a killer. Yeah, we got some killers on this defense, man. We 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 got some killers on this defense, but um, we'll we'll see what happens. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of months. There's a lot of weeks, and there's a lot of days to to add and keep adding good talent to this team, right? You know, who would have thought that over a weekend to free agency, freaking Tyron Matthew. Uh, Calais Campbell, Eddie Goldman, all these guys would still be on the market. So we'll we'll definitely get some good players very, very soon. I think that right now, though, they're kind of sitting back and just, you know, kind of kind of settling in, you know, coming back down to earth a little bit. But we'll see. You know, I think there's a lot of a lot of a lot of ground still to be uh, covered. And I think we will cover it. I think we will cover it. Is Calais a defensive tackle? That's the thing about Calais Campbell, man. Um, he's one of those freaks that can literally play any position on the defensive line. And when I mean a freak, he is a freak. He can play defensive end when we're in our nickel defense. He can play defensive tackle when we're in our 3-4 defense. He can play nose tackle if he if he felt like it. He, he played nose tackle against the Raiders this last – this last season opener, and he absolutely manhandled Andre James the entire game, right? So Calais Campbell, you know, people may look at his numbers in terms of sacks and say, oh, he's not the same player. Calais Campbell is still a freaking baller. So I would love for us to add him to this team. It would be a, a great addition. It would be a great addition. Uh, Champion says, what about Akeem Hicks? I don't want Akeem Hicks. In my opinion, just if, you, if you're going to go out and you're going to get a veteran defensive tackle, go out and get Calais Campbell. Akeem Hicks, in my opinion, is just a – he's a walking injury. He's a walking injury, man. He, he's a great player when he's playing, and he's extremely, extremely productive when he's playing, right? Like, his numbers, when he's playing, he is – damn, man. Like, he is a damn, damn good, good player. But he's just not healthy – for 16 games now 17 games so it's 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 tough man it's tough I, I i just wouldn't bring him in i just wouldn't bring him in 32 years old with a groin injury yeah that's tough that's tough bro like that uh, i'm not i don't know um you know they ran on max also i mean the the amount of yards that they gained on max crosby compared to the amount of yards um <laughs> that they gained on yannick and Gagwe is just laughable like you we're not going to sit here and act like fucking Max Crosby was a liability in coverage or in, in the run. Um, and, and Yannick was just some all around beast. Like there's a reason that Yannick Ngakwe is not stuck with a team. He's been on what, four teams in less in, in, in what, 13 months. Like that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. Like, the Ravens traded for him and then they let him walk in free agency. That's not a good sign, right? So um, I definitely like Yannick. I wish that Yannick was still here, but Chandler Jones is overall better in every single aspect of the game. Simple as that. And he fits the scheme. And he fits the scheme. Uh, Honey Badger signed with another team. I don't think so. Honey Badger's still out there, brother. I don't think so. Unless, unless it like just happened right now, but I, I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, uh, we should get Honey Badger, move Abram to linebacker, re-sign Hankins, and get Calais Campbell, and also Billy Turner extend Carr. Those are all things that can happen very, very soon. Um, I feel like we may be also a little bit quiet in terms of adding these bigger name guys because we want to extend Carr. We want to um get him locked in for many years. We want people that are coming to the team knowing that Derek Carr is our quarterback long-term. So that's why I feel like today we weren't really making any um, roster-altering moves um, with, with, the, with the pickups that we got. Like, we were getting guys that are good depth. We were getting guys that are going to play a role. But we, we, personally, I don't think we picked up one starter today. Like, Jermaine Illuminar may not start. Brandon Parker may not start. So 
I don't think we picked up one starter. I definitely feel like what we did today was at good depth. We were filling up our roster, and that's good. That is very, very good. But at the same time, um, I, I feel like we want to get our quarterback set up first, make our quarterback happy, make our new receiver happy, and then move on from there, and then begin to really make those moves. And I feel like maybe that's possibly why um, – we we haven't added a Stephon Gilmore. We haven't added a Calais Campbell or a Chandler or a what was I was about to say or a Honey Badger, you know. So <laughs> Parker better get cut in camp. Honestly, Stephen, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Um, let's see. Good good depth pieces. Super Bowl teams always have depth. I still think um, there may be a name or two available that we get excited about. Overall, rounding out the squad. Exactly, exactly. King. Um, what was that Kings? King's taste. There you go. There you go. Um, let's see. Abrams is not a linebacker. I, I think that that's where he'll have his best, uh, best, best performances. And if you look at his best performance of his career, actually was at the linebacker position. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> We're getting toughy by adding the big uglies. We got to get these big boys on the roster, man. Is Averett a starter? I feel like Averett is definitely a guy that can, they can push. They can push for. A, they can push for a, for a starting job, but I'm I'm happy that we brought him in. Right, he's a guy only 27 years old, coming off a career season. Um, definitely should have got a bigger contract, but hey, it looks like Dave Ziegler and and McDaniel's have really been able to to bring in these guys for for lower than their market value. So we've been doing a good job. We've been doing a damn good job, especially our front office. Um, Andy, do you think the coaching staff thinks the offensive line struggles was bad coaching and they can coach them up and fix their mechanics? Do you trust this coaching staff to make them better? I do. I do trust this coaching staff, right? I mean, I, th I don't think they've had a bottom. I don't think they've had an offensive line lower than top 10 in like the last three seasons. So I definitely do believe in this coaching staff. I definitely do believe in Carmen Brasillo. Um, but I'm not sure if I believe in them more than I believe in Brandon Parker as a player. Um, but again, if they believe and they see something in Brandon Parker um, outside of what the film shows, then go ahead, give him a shot. Give him a shot. Everybody deserves a chance, right? I'm just not too sure that Brandon Parker's earned himself another chance with the Raiders, you know, but we'll, we'll see. Out of five DBs, I think Avery starts. Well, you got to think about it. At the end of the day, when we go into our dime packages, when we go into our into our odd into our odd packages, when we go into those three three five sets where we need a bunch of defensive backs on the field, I think that Anthony Avery would be one of those guys, right? I think that Anthony Avery is going to be a guy that'll play a lot of snaps when we're in our dime, maybe even our, in our nickel. Who knows? Um, but. I think that those dime packages, when we have a bunch of DBs out there, I think that that's where uh, Anthony Averett holds his best value, right? Because I don't feel like there's a huge, there's not really a drop off between um, Anthony Averett and a guy like Trayvon Mullen. There's there isn't a drop off, um, so that that's the that's the good part. That's the good part, right? So we'll we'll see who will be our backup uh, center, who will be our starting or backup center. I think Andre James is the starter. Um, especially after restructuring, but as far as who's our backup center, I'm not too sure. Are we going to play in the four-two-five defense? Well, the four-two-five is a nickel defense. That's four defensive linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs. That's a nickel defense. Um, there's many, many different nickel defenses out there, but um, yes, the four-two-five is something that we'll be in a lot. Um, I believe it was used in Patrick Graham's system over 65% of the time last year. So technically their base was a 3-4, but in reality their base was a 4-2-5 nickel defense. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. But I definitely feel like we'll be in the nickel more than we're in a 3-4 or a 4-3 or a dime, you know. So we'll see. We'll see. Um We'll probably play with four defensive linemen with variations on the back end. I think I think that that'll be somewhat what we'll be doing. That I think that that's what we'll somewhat be doing. We getting Gilmore, bro. Trap. I I, I really don't know, man. <laughs> I really don't know. It seems like day in and day out, the Raiders get closer and closer to a deal with Gilmore, and it just doesn't happen by the end of the day, right? Gilmore 
it was looking like we were the front runners because the Jets got their guy, the Niners got their guy, and then it looked like certain teams kind of pulled out of getting Stephon Gilmore. And then today, it looks like we were still the front runners, and then out of nowhere, the Cincinnati Bengals offer Stephon Gilmore a contract. So we'll see. We'll definitely see what happens, but um, I, I I still have hope that we can get Gilmore. I really, really want Gilmore on this roster. And uh, one thing I'm going to ask you guys, actually, if you could go out and get Stephon Gilmore or the Honey Badger, not not both, if you can choose one, who would you guys pay? Would you pay a Stephon Gilmore or would you pay the Honey Badger? Me personally, I'm paying Stephon Gilmore. I would pay Stephon Gilmore um, 10 times out of 10 over the Honey Badger. But if we are not able to land Gilmore and we went out and we got the Honey Badger, I would be freaking ecstatic. I would be ecstatic. Um, let's see. We got Gilmore, 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 <laughs> James Brad. Really, really, really. This man said James Bradbury, Gilmore, Gilmore, um, Gilmore. Damn, Gilmore is just, oh, Honey Badger. There you go, Adrian, Tyron, Matthew, Honey Badger, Gilmore easily, Gilmore. Yeah, this motherfucker said he still wants Richard Sherman. I'm dead. Yeah, no, no, see, that's the thing, though. It's like Honey Badger is great. I think that Gilmore is great turf. Like, I, I, I really just want Gilmore on this roster. Now, if we don't get a Gilmore, but we get the Honey Badger, I, I mean, shit. You're, that is a damn good pickup, bro, regardless. Regardless. Um, Let's see. I'd pay Gilmore because if Gilmore loses a step, I still think he's a good enough player to be uh, used how Pat used Logan Ryan. That's a good way to think about it. That is a very, very good way to think about it, actually. Um, damn, I never thought of it that way. I never freaking thought of it that way. Just player for player, Tyron, ba Tyron, to be honest, is younger. He's not that much worse than Gilmore. So we're going off of age. I, I understand that, Tavio. I understand that. I understand that. This man says Patrick Peterson. Ah, come on, EC. Pat Pete. Let's get both happy get with TJ Carey, man. Remember TJ Carey? He was actually a pretty pretty decent slot, and then he went to then he went to the Cleveland Browns, and then he went to Indy, and then I think his career was over. <laughs> you look like Andre Dan. Damn. Hey, I, I'll take it. I look. Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> whatever. Um, Gilmore or Honey Badger. It's a win win. Exactly. Exactly, Stephen. Like if you get either one of them, you you're good. You did good in the offseason. Like, that's a damn good pickup. This man says, Woodson. Uh, facts. Bring in Badger and Peterson and reunite them uh, Them again, LSU days. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Uh, Matthew is a playmaker. He is. He he can be a playmaker. And you're, and you're right, Graham. You're right. And and I definitely like that argument. But at the same time, this is always I, something I've always said, right? And and it's kind of hard to compare the two because they play two different positions. But I said I, I've always preferred a guy that can lock down his area, lock down his side, over a guy that's going to give up a lot of yards, but he's going to make a huge play. I would I would much rather the first option. And I feel like that's what Gilmore is. And Gilmore... With him being such a good corner, he actually gives other people on the roster chances to make plays, right? Um, I, I like them both. I like them both. But I really, really would just prefer Gilmore over Tyra Matthew. But at the same time, think of how good of a freaking problem that is that we're sitting here and talking about potentially going out and getting Gilmore or Tyra Matthew. Like, that's a damn good problem to have. Right. If that's what we're arguing over, that's fucking phenomenal. At the end of the day, though, I do want to leave this offseason with one of those guys on our roster. Um, that that's 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 what I, I think. I definitely want to leave with one of those guys on this roster. Um, Trey Waynes, that's a that's a good option to look at. Um, you know, Shadow recently released. I think he just got released today, actually. Um that's that's not a bad option, right? Trey Waynes is a good option. He's just injured, like, all the time. All the time. So, I like Trey Waynes. I, you you kind of got Trey Waynes' dread shadow, 
But at the same time, bro, it's like, damn, do we want to pay that for a guy that's injury prone? Kind of like Akeem Hicks, right? Good player, but he's injury prone. He's injury prone. Um, shout out to BB says, how do we get an extra 20 mil from extending, extending car? Uh, pretty simple BB, um, extending car, then you can rework the deal. You can, <laughs> you can, you can add, you can convert his 19 point whatever million dollars, um, this year into a signing bonus, which then takes that off of the books, which then clears up $19 million towards your cap. So it's all about how you restructure and how you do your contracts. But anybody that's under the contract that gets an extension, you can convert this year's cap into a signing bonus, and you can then take that off the books, and it's it, it frees up a lot of money. So with Derek Carr getting an extension, you can free up up to like $19.8 million. So it's it's really all how it gets done. Um, this we we already saw um with with Colton Miller get his restructure. They they his cap hit is only like six million dollars this year, but it's because he got like eleven million dollars in in terms of like a, a bonus or some shit like that. So there's there's always ways that you can work around this. Always ways that you can work around this. And and Derek Carr definitely frees up a lot of money um, if Mark Davis is willing to completely just turn his 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 cap hit this year into a signing bonus. So we'll see. You can make a lot of money with Derek Carr getting an extension. Um, and shout out to Joe. He says I like the I like the Honey Badger over Gilmore only if Abram gets moved to linebacker. Okay. What would it take to trade into the first? You think when you what, what? when you think dates for games release? Um. Okay. To answer your first question, what what do I think it would tra take to trade into the first round? Personally, I feel like it would take basically your entire draft capital. Like, there's no point. I I, I wouldn't want to do that. I I would much rather just try and leave the draft with maybe two two starters, right, with, with the with the picks that we have now. Um, and when do I think that the dates for games release? I think the games, um, they last year they got released around, what, two months before the season started? So we're in Mar March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Wait, wait, June, July, August. So probably in, like, June, probably in June. That's what I think, but I could be completely wrong. And shout out to Jack. He says, if Bradbury gets let go, get him. Um, if what? If Bradbury lets good lets gets let go, if get him in a longer contract than Bradbury, my bro, keep grinding. Salute to my brothers and sisters. Facts. Um, I agree. If 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 Bradbury gets let go, I'm I'm picking up Bradbury over Gilmore. Simple as that. I'm <laughs> simple as that, man. Simple as that. He's younger. He's a guy that has been known to erase tight ends in this system with Patrick Graham. I would love that. I would love that. Uh, Raider Raider Dame says in May. Okay, I would I would like. That. I mean, if the if the schedule gets released in May, let's do it. Tavio's on board with me, man. If 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 Bradbury gets released, man. Who you pounce on that immediately. You pounce on that immediately, man. You have to. Shit hurt my head reading that. It kind of did hurt my head too, bro. But it is what it is. Um, yeah, I I shout out to my guy Jack. I know what he meant though. I know what Jack meant. Um, Bradbury would be a uh, I don't think Bradbury would be cheaper than Gilmore. I don't think that Bradbury would be cheaper than Gilmore. The reason why Bradbury would be let go is because he's expensive. Bradbury's a guy that has 22 million dollars on the books this year right his contract is expensive he's getting paid like a top corner but at the same time um i would i would go out and try and get him i, I don't think that he's cheaper though i don't i don't know if he's cheaper my guy brandon says trade for mp juice man i mean i don't know what i don't know what marcus peters trade value would be um i i don't think that it would be too high. I don't think it'd be too high. Um, I, I'm not too sure though if I would trade for Marcus Peters. Like, I, I would love to bring in Marcus Peters to the dark side. 
let let him play for most likely his hometown his hometown team right Marcus Peters from Oakland um I'm sure him being cousins with 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 Marshawn Lynch he's a big Raider guy I'm sure but you know Marcus Peters is real hit or miss right he's 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 going to make a big play, but it's because he's going to try and jump a lot of those short routes. And while jumping those short routes, you know, schemes are teams are going to now scheme up double moves against you and, and that kind of stuff. And then big plays get made. So you get a lot of production from Marcus Peters. But at the same time, if we're talking about trading for him, I'm not sure if I would want to give up cap or give up draft capital to bring in a guy like that, you know, but I would I love I love Marcus Peters, though, bro. So. Um, we'll see what's up with Kilmore, bro. We, we've been talking about this, bro. Um, you know, it's looking like the Raiders are kind of like the front runners, but at the same time, um, Cincinnati just today hit, you know, they, they, they brought in, they brought in an offer for Gilmore. They put an offer on the table for Gilmore. So who knows, hopefully with these, with these Patriot, you know, ties and connections that we have with Gilmore, um, we can pick him up, right? We have a lot of connections to Gilmore, right? We have Patrick Graham, we have McDaniels, and we have Ziegler, right? Those are connections from his Patriot days. But we may not know, we may, um, we, we can't forget that our pass game coordinator on the defensive side of the ball was the Carolina Panthers pass game coordinator. So where did he just, where, where is Gilmore just now coming from? He's coming from the Carolina Panthers. So there's connections there with Stefan Gilmore. Um, I really hope that we can land him, but it's kind of not worrying me because I don't really care too much, but it's kind of weird that we haven't kind of pulled the trigger already. I do think kind of like what I said early on, I feel like with, with, with Gilmore, it's kind of like, I feel like he wants to know what the quarterback situation is, right? Like, I feel like what we want to do right now is go in, lock in our quarterback of the future. We locked in our receiver of the future. We have our tight end under the contract. We have all these guys under contract, right? So I, I don't know if, if guys are hesitant signing with the Raiders, not knowing the quarterback situation, um, because he's only here for one more year, right? And all these quarterbacks are getting traded every single day. So it's it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough, but I feel like we're probably trying to lock down Derek Carr long term before we go out and get a Stephon Gilmore. It's just a little worrying that while we're monitoring Stephon Gilmore, other teams are backing out, but other teams are coming into this play. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, what do you think about trading for Darius Slay? No, Darius Slay is a great corner, but he's a great zone corner. Like Darius Slay is not a man coverage corner. He's not a man coverage corner, and I love Darius Slay, but I would not trade for Darius Slay, especially not in this system. Um, Shots to Ruben Rust. He says, what do you think about bringing in Marcus Cannon, who's a Patriot guy? Any veterans you would trade for on the O-line, and what would you give up? <clears throat> um, any, any guys I would trade for? Ah, man. I, I don't know about trading. Look. This is the thing. Offensive linemen hold a lot of value, bro. Offensive linemen hold a lot of freaking value. So it's kind of hard trading for these old linemen, right? We saw Shaq Mason go for, what, a fifth-round pick? Um, you guys may not think that's much, but a fifth-round pick is is good. It's, it's good. But, um, I mean, veteran offensive linemen, I, I really like how um, – What's his face? What's it? What, what's his name from from Indianapolis plays? Not 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 Quentin Nelson. They got a they got a right tackle over there. Brandon Smith. I like how Brandon Smith plays his football. I would definitely look into that. But um, I think that his value is very very high because he's not he's not old. But we'll we'll see we'll see. I, I I really don't know though in terms of trading for an offensive lineman. I'm not too sure. Um, shout out to Joey. He says trade next year's first, this year's third, and either Jacobs or Drake to move into the first. I just want Davis on our team, bro. Still could sign Gilmore too. Trade next year's first, this year's third, and either Jacobs to move into the first. Look, I'm gonna be honest, bro. If that's all it takes, Joey, I would I would entertain that. I would entertain that, bro. I would entertain that. Shout out to my guy big time. He says, if if no Gilmore, get Honey Badger and DJX. I wouldn't be mad at that at all. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad at that at all. 
my guy Flick says, where'd you get the hat? I got it in uh, at Lids, bro, at Lids in Sacramento. So if any of you guys are in the Sacramento area or in or in the Bay Area, um, just take a two-hour trip, take an hour and a half, um, you know, take an hour and a half drive, hour 45 drive to Sacramento, hit up the mall. They got two Lids stores out there um, in the Arden Mall. They got a lot of Raiders shit in there. So that's where I get most of my stuff, you know. I take a lot of trips out to Sacramento. My sister live out there, so I always go out there. Um, and when I'm out there, I gotta get me some Raider gear, man. Always. For Darian Mathis in the third, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll pass. Just grab Kobe Bryant in the third. I don't. I don't think that we get any corners in the draft, especially if we bring in a Stephon Gilmore. Shout out to my guy Ronnie. He says, "Hey, youngster, what's good with you, my man? What's poppin'? Um, five eighty drive. Fuck the <laughs> what? What? What did I just read? Could we go safety in the draft? There's a couple safeties that I would love for us to get in the draft, man. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of Aron McKinley. Uh, wasted put me on to uh to Kirby Joseph, and X put me on to to Nick Cross out of Maryland." Me personally, I feel like there's more value in going linebacker in the third round, safety in the fourth round, and then just going out and getting best player available um, in the with your two fifth round picks and your seventh round pick. That's what I feel like the Raiders should do. Um, you know, a lot of people may be saying go out and get a defensive tackle. In my opinion, I'm not like too crazy on getting a defensive tackle. I don't think so. My guy EC says, if I could trade Perryman for a guy like Blake Martinez, I'd do it. Just for scheme fit, but there aren't many guys like that who are comparable in value for um comparable in value for value sense. That's true. That's true. Um I, I wouldn't trade I wouldn't trade for Blake Martinez, though. I feel like Blake Martinez is like they're kind of the same player, but at the same time, you're right, EC. He fits the scheme. So it, it makes sense, but I feel like they're pretty much the same player. Um, they're both kind of ass in coverage. Blake Martinez is a little bit better in coverage, though. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Corker is nice out of Kentucky. You're right. Um, what's his name? Brian Cooks out of Cincinnati is decent, too. So we'll see. We'll see. Andy, you go DT in the third. I mean, it depends what defensive tackle was there in the third, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'd grab any defensive tackle in the third round. Um, I just don't like the defensive tackles after, like, after the top seven defensive tackles, I don't like them. Like, they're not good to me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see the value in getting those guys. Now, um, you know, that's just me though. Like, that's just me. Brandon Parker, uh, the GOAT is back. Oh, man, that, it's, it's kind of. It's kind of disappointing to see him back. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Miguel, he says, how about Brian Poole? I, I think you meant to say Brian Poole, not Brain Poole. But um, Brian Poole, a, he's a slot guy. He's a really good slot corner, but he's a slot guy. I wouldn't I wouldn't bring him in. You know, you have Nate Hobbs. I, I, I think you stick with Nate Hobbs, man. Don't move Nate Hobbs to the outside. Keep him on the inside. Let him flourish. Let him flourish. Abraham Lucas in the third round is an absolute steal. Like, that would be the steal um, of the draft, in my opinion. If Abraham Lucas was in the third round at our pick, I would I would literally punch every single person in the Raiders front office if they did not go out and get this man. Like, Abraham Lucas, in my opinion, is probably the most technically sound offensive tackle in this year's draft. Like, out of all these guys, all these guys, I'm, I'm being so serious. Abraham Lucas, in my opinion, may have the best technique in the entire draft class when it comes to offensive tackles. The only problem is strength and and his height. Like he's he's kind of small for a, for a right tackle, so um, he may have to bump in when he gets into the league. He may have to bump into the guard position, but I mean, you can definitely gain strength in the NFL. One thing you can't gain though is height, and he doesn't really have that. He doesn't really have that. McGlinchey may never play again. He tore his thigh muscle. Wow, really? Uh, clean off the bone. That uh, it's got to be. Oh my god! Wow, that's so. Oh man, that sucks. That sucks. Abraham Lincoln? Nah, not Abraham Lincoln, brother. Abraham Lucas. Did I say Abraham Lincoln? Oh shit! 
Did I say that? Hey, Andy, have you checked out the corner from Pitt? He jumped the 40. Fuck. And he is six foot or six foot one and 200 pounds. I have not checked him out. I have not, but it, he sounds like a freak athlete, though. So are we cutting Gillespie? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so, but we'll see. We'll see. Y'all got to keep Perryman. We just got Gerald, Gerald Everett. He's going to cook. Did I miss something, or who the hell is Gerald Everett? Oh, I don't think we got nobody named Gerald Everett. I, I might have just missed something, though. I don't, I don't know. I don't think we missed. I don't know if I missed anything. I don't think we got no mother named Gerald Everett. <laughs> we got a guy named Kyler Frackle and, and Micah Kaiser at the linebacker position. I, I don't remember no Gerald Everett's. Get the Charger fan out of here. Oh, you're talking about the Chargers. I forgot. I forgot this dude was a Charger fan. Shout, shout out to Hunter though. He's a, he's a he's a cool he's a cool dude, man. He he likes he likes coming up in here, you know, learning about what we got, um, and 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 just mourning and all the all the trashness that the that the Chargers organization is, you know, like. Only the Chargers can have number one offense, number one defense, and, and and still miss the playoffs. You know, only the Chargers. So, we'll see. We'll see. He, he's, he, well, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Trade for Taylor Martin. That'd be a good pickup, man. But I really doubt that the Carolina Panthers will let him go. <laughs> yeah. Is a good coverage linebacker? I, I don't think so like i like i like kaiser kisser or how the fuck his name is but i, I don't know i i don't think he's a good li coverage linebacker he's a thumper though he can hit he can hit for sure um charges are, are are poop i agree charges suck like like isn't it crazy that on paper the charges always have a great roster and still find a way to suck like only <clears throat> Only the Chargers can do shit like that. Only them. Everett wasn't bad with the Rams. Trade Jacobs for a second round pick. Listen, man, you guys killed me when I said yes, I would trade Jacobs for a second round pick. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Would I trade Jacobs for a second round pick? Yes. What? What? A second round pick? Yes. Look, as soon as I said that shit, we were at 385 of you guys. We went down to 369. We can't talk about Trey Jacobs in here, man. Brandon Parker's garbage. I believe. I, I I agree. I agree. Let's see. Our safety room is actually nice. We still need a linebacker and defensive tackle, in my opinion. Dude, I think that we need to go out and we need to get Eddie freaking Goldman. Can you imagine a defensive line that consists of Chandler Jones, Max Crosby, Eddie Goldman, and Bilal Nichols? Are we serious? That is amazing right there, man. That is freaking amazing. Like, you got, oh, my gosh. You got to go out and do that, man. You you reunite two Chicago boys in the middle. You let them cook. You let, you let, you let Max and Chandler eat on the outside. Like, come on, dog. That would be phenomenal, bro. If you can go out and get Eddie Goldman, oh, my God. Eddie Goldman, in my opinion, is the final piece of the puzzle in terms of this defensive line in, in, in terms of starting, like our starters, right? So I think that would be a great starting cast. I think we would definitely need to go out and add more depth. But, but bro, like Eddie Goldman, we got to do it. We got to do it. Um, Devontae Adams has our, has our division shook facts, 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 my man. Um, Jack says, any, next time you come to Sacramento to buy a hat, I will, I will take you to lunch, man. Maybe Ray will come down. My son works at seasons, uh, 52 at the mall so, uh, at Arden mall at Arden mall. Uh, Jack, that's dope, man. That's dope. Um, next time I go, I'll definitely, I'll definitely have to have to, uh, keep that in mind and, and try and. And try and hit you up, man. That's that's fire. Um, let's see. We should have kept Q Jefferson. I, I agree with that, bro. That that one kind of sucked. That that one kind of sucked, man. 
Quentin Jefferson, you know, he's going back to Seattle where, where he started his career, but it is what it is, man. Um, J.C. Jackson, lockdown. J.C. Jackson's a baller, hun. It's, you know, you guys should be happy that you got J.C. Jackson, but um, there isn't one defensive back in the league. <laughs> there isn't one defensive back in the league that can fuck with Devontae Adams. So it's like, yeah, you got yourself a lockdown corner. Every single week, you're not playing the Raiders. So for 15 weeks, you got yourself a lockdown corner. But, brother, I am sorry. I am sorry, man. There's not one. There's not one. <laughs> there's not one corner in the league that's fucking with Devontae Adams, bro. And that's just a fact. Um, Eddie Goldman got picked up already. He didn't, Glenn. Eddie Goldman is still out on the market. And don't play with my heart like that, man, because I've seen every single freaking defensive tackle go off the market. So if Eddie Goldman went off the market, I'd be very, very sad and disappointed. Um, I think at that point, we'd have to go out and get the Chargers sloppy seconds and go out and get um, um, Linval Joseph. I, I think we'd have to do that. Linval Joseph is still a damn good player. Linval Joseph is a good player. He's not the same pass rusher he was, but he's a damn good run stopper and a damn good nose tackle. So I would go out and bring in Linval Joseph if we missed out on Eddie Goldman. Um, JC is going to get cooked by Tay most definitely. Devontae Adams is going to have like in between – if we combine both games, Devontae Adams is going to have, like, 300 yards on, on JC. <laughs> like, he's going to have, like, 150 apiece. Like, we're talking about Devontae Adams, bro. Like, what? Come on now. Uh, he says, okay, I agree, but if Aaron Rodgers couldn't win a ring with Adams, how was Derek Carr? Listen, listen, Aaron Rodgers, man, is Aaron Rodgers. Derek Carr is Derek Carr. Aaron Rodgers... Is Aaron Rodgers? You know, it's a new team, no scheme. You you gotta you gotta you gotta let it you gotta let it rock, man. You gotta let it rock. <laughs> Come on now, D D C D C almost fucking beat the motherfuckers that went to the Super Bowl, brother. Let Let's not forget about that. He almost beat the motherfuckers that went to the Super Bowl, bro. Like we can get there, we can get there, and it ain't about the team, like. It's not just about quarterbacks, bro. Like, Jimmy G went to the fucking Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes, right? Like, those two guys shouldn't even be in the same conversations when we're talking about quarterbacks, right? So it's not about quarterback play, bro. Yes, quarterback play is a big part of it, bro. But, like, <laughs> I I mean, Jimmy G is, like, down here, bro. And, Aaron, and Patrick Mahomes is the top of the top. So... That's all I'm going to say, bro. Like, you, you're making a valid point there, but at the same time, it's kind of not. <laughs> it, you know? Gilmore ain't in Cincinnati. I never said he was in Cincinnati. I said that Cincinnati offered him a contract. Who signed Goldman? Nobody. Gilmore's in Vegas? You're lying. You're lying, Callie. Callie, man, don't fuck with me like that, man. Is Gilmore in Vegas? Is Gilmore in Vegas? Ain't no motherfucking way. Ain't no motherfucking way. Hold on. Hold on. He lying? Damn, bruh. Why you gotta... Oh, you motherfucker, you. Callie. I should block your ass. Shout out to AD. He says, yo, what's good? I'm hella late, but I'm here. Hey, that's all that matters, AD. That's all that matters, fam. That's all that matters, fam. Um, don't trust chat during free agency. I know Joseph is kind of fucked up. He, <laughs> he said, block him. Damn. Damn. Operator said, block his ass. Hey, does he deserve it? A little bit. The A little bit. <laughs> Gilmore spotted at MGM. Get the fuck out of here, Noel. Oh, man. He's on vacation. I'm excited to see JC Adams, JC versus Adams, though, for real. I mean, Come on. He's, he says, I'm also excited to see Keenan versus Yassine and Mike Dub versus Trayvon Mullen. Look, V Hunnets, Mike Williams got absolutely fucking sunned by a motherfucker that is the height of his son, bro. Your, your $20 million a year receiver got fucking 
whew, that boy got covered like a blanket. He got covered like a blanket by fucking Amik Robertson. And y'all paying that man $20 million a year. Nevertheless, put put, put freaking Rocky Sin on him. Whew. Come on now. And and th- think about this, V Hunnets. If we get Gilmore, if we land Gilmore, y'all are fucked. Y'all are fucked. Gilmore on Keenan Allen and your sin on Mike Williams. Y'all are f- y'all are done. Like, come on, bro. What we are building here, V Hunnets, is to beat our division, right? We went out, we got Anthony Averett, the Tyreek Hill killer, and then we went out and got two man on man corners. Man on man corners, right? That completely stop your style of receivers. Come on now. Come on now. Like, it, you, you need to understand, bro. We out here playing chess. Y'all out there getting JC Jackson for big, big money. I get it. I wanted JC Jackson too. But we out here playing chess, brother. Like, it is what it is. It is what it is. This man said, bolt up. Damn, bro. Like, I I don't even think I've never, I I don't think I've ever seen a motherfucker say, bolt up, like, proudly. So, you know, just because you said that, your ass going in timeout, man. Like, what? Bolt up? Motherfucker, them bolts can go away. Come on, man. Um, shout, shout out to my guy Kenny, man. He says the O line is critical for us to win. That's where it is true. We we need an O line. We need an O line, bro. We need an O line. I know we got a lot of fire firepower, but we still need an O line, bro. The 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 game is one in the trenches. Simple as that. Simple as that. He says, yeah, he did. Not gonna lie, but j- just watch when we draft Jamo. It's over. Y'all not getting Jamo. The fucking Cleveland Browns getting jammo. Damn. It, it, it'll be interesting to see who you guys draft, though. If you guys do draft jammo, well, guess what? Nate Hobbs is on that ass. <laughs> Nate Hobbs is on that ass, bro. Like, come on, man. Like, this defensive back room is not playing, bro. Like, just, oh, man, hun, it's, you know, it's going to be real nice when we finish this season, man. When we are on this season. And you just real depressed in this chat, you feel me? But, yeah. It, it is what it is, man. Who's Jamo? A B B. If you don't know who Jamo is, man, I don't know if you watch college football. I don't watch college football, but I still know who Jamo is. He's a baller, man. But um, I, I don't know if his game will necessarily translate to the NFL. Um, You know, he he's a guy that he, – he's an explosive player, but I do feel like his, his game is – a lot made on his speed. I think that he has a lot of assets that that can that can translate to the NFL. But his overall game, in my opinion, I I, I don't think will translate all the way to the NFL. That shit was hilarious. Fins up, bro. I remember when motherfuckers tried to do that shit in grab chat. Oh my god, that was <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, both up just to be nine and eight in a division. Facts. Facts, Jr. Um, since Chris Harris is gone, Asante is going to the slot permanently. Renfro ain't going to do much. Think about it, bro. You're <laughs> like, look, look, Hunnis. I get it. I get it. Asante Samuel Jr. Like, it sounds good, right? Like, it, it sounds good. I get it. It sounds good, Hunnis. But when we're talking about Hunter Renfro is cooking up. Jalen Ramsey's Hunter Renfro is cooking up all these top corners. Xavier Howard's Byron Jones. Who the fuck is an Asante Samuel Jr. to Hunter Renfro? Come on, man. Like, stop it. Stop it. Come on, man. Let's Hunnets. I fuck with y'all, man. I, I fuck with you, Hunnets. But let's stop that. That's 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 light work. Asante Samuel, are we being for real? Come on, man. He says that little ass China route. God, I hate that. Facts. 
I love it though. Renfro's a beast. He is a beast. People underestimated Renfro. Listen, if people want to underestimate Renfro, don't put respect on that man's name and just see how you get done by the end of the game. It's pretty simple. Exactly, EC. Asante is nice, but Renfro will still get his. Third in who? Renfro. First in who? Renfro. Second in who? Renfro. Asante Samuel who? Renfro's son. That's how we doing it. That's how we doing it. Uh, Renfro is a real deep threat. <laughs> Hold on, man. I got to open this door for this dog, bro. Rusty, come here, man. You over here acting like a little, little hoe. Look, oh. Um, Renfro had nine. He had nine for real. Damn. Shout out, shout out to Jackie. Says, Andy, you bought a lot of great caps from Raiders Image in Sacramento, but my cap that I bought there is the best. I met Cliff, had a drink, bro. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome that you were able to meet him. And I'm and I'm glad that you think that you got the best hat. I'm glad that you think that because I know I got the best one. Shout out to my guy, my guy T Von. He says, um, "How y'all, how y'all like all these depth signings? I love them. I love it, bro. I love the depth signings, right? Like, you, you have to build a roster. You have to make a roster where it's competitive on every single phase. Whether it's your backups, your third strings, and your starters, it has to be competitive on all phases of the football field. And um, that's kind of why I really like the uh, the frack row signing because I I wanted Malcolm Kuntz to 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 start." in some role, but at the same time, bringing in frack rule is a damn good, um, you know, competition in terms of camp. And at the same time, they can learn from each other. Right. So I, I like that. I like that a lot. L, uh, LA is, is in the middle. Listen, I, out of all these good teams in our division, though, I still think, I still think Denver is going to finish in last. I still think Denver is finishing last, bro. I, I, here, here's how I think it'll happen, right? I think that, damn, bro. I, I really don't know. Like this, 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 this offensive firepower that's in this division right now. I don't know if if Kansas City's defense can can hold on. I don't know if Kansas City's defense can hold on, man. And they are in some cap hell over there because they're still they're trying to pay. Fifty million dollars to Mahomes and twenty million dollars to Tyree Kill and twenty to Chris Jones and another fifteen to to Clark or whatever the hell his name is. So they're in some cap hell over there. So um, I honestly, in a, in and this might be a bold take. I honestly could see either the Raiders or the Chargers at the top of this division, the Chiefs in third, and the Broncos in last. That's what I think. That's honestly what I think. Um, the Chiefs, I think, will still make the playoffs, though. I think the Chiefs will still make make the playoffs just because they got Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, Spagnola, and and Mahomes, and 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 Kelsey, and those guys. But their fucking defense, Charmin City, is boo boo. Like it is bad. So, <laughs> yeah, and they franchise tagged uh, Orlando Brown Jr. Like they're fucked, bro. Like. Their defense, Casey's defense, everybody say it with me, is boo-boo. Like, it sucks. Everybody, they have the worst division in, I mean, they got the worst defense in the division. Um, everybody is trying to catch up on offense, uh, it, it, except for Denver. Denver's offense is, like, mediocre as fuck. So, I don't know. So, three teams make the playoffs out of our division? Yes. I think that three the three teams that make it to the playoffs this year, um, I think the three teams can make it to the playoffs out of our division this year. We almost saw it last year, bro. If Daniel Carlson would have missed that fucking field goal, we would have seen three teams from the AFC West make the playoffs, bro. I definitely feel like three teams from the AFC West, with how much and how good each team uh, in this division has gotten, I think three teams will make the, the playoffs out of this division. Like, it's that competitive, bro. It's that competitive. Um, that, that's what I think. Um, shout out to SJ says you really blown up, man. Congrats to you, man, man a lot. Y'all don't understand, man. Me being on here, talking to you guys, me being on here, growing my channel is because of you guys, bro. 
is because of you guys. You guys have gotten me to where I'm at. Like, I could post as many videos as I want, many lives as I want. Y'all are the ones that have 400, 500 people in here watching me, bro, supporting me. So this success is your guys' success, bro. So I appreciate you guys, man. I appreciate you guys so much, so much. And and there's, you know, I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna just keep pumping out this content, man. You guys are showing love and support, man. Showing love and support. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, but but listen, man. I'm. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm here for it, man. I'm just here for it. Um, my guy Andy finally a legal driver, hey, amen. But yes, we are. I'm still waiting for the little the little cards to come in the mail. But yes, we are. We are. Um, so honest is why y'all still keep playing. Why y'all keep stealing our players though? Like for real. Uh, I wanted fact roll back. We never we never take from y'all except for, for Mac. Yeah, you can't say you never take from us and then take a guy. That 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 was a fucking two time defensive player of the year from us. Like you, you can't say that shit. Like what? We're over here taking fucking Denzel Perrymans and frack rails, and 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 then you want to bring up Khalil Mack? Like what? Come on, man. Like what? Come on, man. Come on. Um, we wouldn't be there if you didn't know your shit. Well, guess what, man? I just, I just appreciate y'all for pulling up, man. <laughs> I just appreciate y'all for pulling up, bro. Really do. I really, really do. Let's see. Let's see. Is he good? Who is, is who good? Casey Hayward. Casey, y'all didn't pay that man. And look, look, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Hunnitz. The reason why all your players are so happy to come here is because we have a true fan base. Y'all don't got shit. Like you guys, even where we, even when we sh shared a home with a baseball team, we built our own. Y'all are sharing a team with the fucking Super Bowl champions. Y'all are like the fucking, I don't know, like, <laughs> like what? Come on, man. Like <sighs> Tyron, bro, all. All of all of your players see a real team, a real fan base, and they say, you know what? I want to go rock with them. That's all it is. Shout out to my guy, Steven, man. So congratulations on the channel. What are we doing on the O-line? Much love. Listen, my guess on the O-line is as good as yours, bro. Um, and I appreciate you, Steven, on the love. But I, I will say this, though. I am happy that we brought Illuminar back. I am happy, I guess, that Brandon Parker is, is a guy that, could compete for a starting job, I guess. You know, it's like he he's he's a guy that can compete with Illuminor and just make Illuminor look better. But um, but yeah, your guess is as good as mine in terms of that. Um, Chargers have no fans, they got nothing. They got nothing, man. Tavio says, Andy, we running one-on-ones in Vegas or what? Listen, man, I ain't playing defense. Any one-on-ones we run in Vegas, I ain't playing defense, bro. I'm straight receiver snagging shit. I tell you this. I got hands, man. I got hands. Shout, shout out to uh, L. Raider. He says, we just got to get two extra tight ends. If Chargers are raising up the D-line, McDaniels will likely play more two tight end sets um, on the O-line from in a blocking formation. Yes. And at the same time, another reason, another reason why I feel, I feel like, um, another reason why I feel like we're going to be in two tight end sets a lot more is because of Illuminor and Brandon Parker, because of the question marks that we have at those positions. So I feel like we'll, we'll, um, we'll have a little bit more help out there because we want to make sure that those guys aren't like, aren't on their own, right? We want to make sure that these guys are doing good. So we want to give them help. So I definitely feel like we were already going to be we were already going to be in a in a in a two tight end set a lot of the time but i feel like it'll honestly just make it more more you know i, I feel like we'll be in the two tight end sets a lot more let's see b honey so we're not going to talk about bears fans took over allegiant listen bro it's our first time with fans look i'm going to put it like this bro a lot of our fan base Probably didn't get the fucking vaccine, motherfucker, so they couldn't go to the game. 
I'm going to keep it at that, bro. I'm going to keep it at that. I'm going to keep it at that, bro. So they couldn't go to the game, bro. They couldn't go to the game. That's what it is, bro. Like, they put that mandate on there. They couldn't go. They couldn't go, bro. Shout out to Anthony. He says, yo, Andy, I kind of hate. What? I kind of hate hearing that from YouTubers. Once they reach milestones, they always say it's because of you guys. Nah, you did this. You're the. You're the, the one that grinds every day. We just subscribe and enjoy. Listen, man. Anthony, that shit goes both ways, man. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Like, without you, there's no me. Without me, there's no you. Simple as that. It goes both ways. So anytime we hit any milestone or speaking for me, I'm going to celebrate it just as much as you guys. Simple as that. Simple as that, man. I appreciate your kind words, though. Um, appreciate your kind words. <clears throat> I couldn't go either. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah, facts. Oh, shout out to Jack. He got to go. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a certain mandate that was that was that was not allowing us to to to, to go to our games. But you know, you, if you want to sprinkle that in, in there into your argument, it is what it is. I mean, who 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 took over y'all stadium? Who took over Yacht Stadium in L.A.? Right. My point. It's my point, man. Like, like we don't we don't want to do the whole taking over stadiums and shit. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. It can get real ugly for y'all. <laughs> we don't want to play that game. We don't want to play that game. Um, Great show, Andy. Appreciate you, Joey boy. Um, Andy, you on Madden? I be on Madden every now and again. I be, I be, yeah, I be on Madden every now and again, you know. Um, I'm always on Madden when the Madden first comes out, and then this shit, the shit just dies down for me. The shit just dies down. So yeah. Um, so far I was blacked out. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like we don't want to do that. We don't, we don't want to do the oh, but what about the no? We're taking over everything. We're taking over everything. Um. Y'all took over so fine. Did what? What was the result? Don't none of the fans matter when y'all still taking L. Listen, man. The biggest L of the season <laughs> was making it to the playoffs, and y'all didn't. Y'all took an L. Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, Steelers fans took over that stadium, bro. Everybody took over that weak ass SoFi Stadium. That weak ass shit. Abram hit the Bears quarterback at the start of the game, and their quarterback struggled to breathe throughout the game. Shout out to Abram. Abram be smacking shit. Abram be smacking shit, man. First round exit. Hey, y'all don't even have a round two exit in. Like, like, come on, man. Y'all don't even have a round two exit in. Y'all don't even have a round to potentially advance in. Y'all just said, oh, oh, our season's done. All right, I guess. <laughs> y'all didn't have an option. <laughs> y'all y'all went home sad. <laughs> y'all went home sad. We lost to a Super Bowl team. Y'all went home sad, fam. Like, come on, man. Come on, fam. Like, li listen, hundreds. I <laughs> come on, man. Like, I know you love your team, but bro. We're not gonna do this because it's just gonna it's just gonna look bad for you, man. We beat a Super Bowl team. Hey man. But you y'all weren't good enough to make it to where it counted, bro. Y'all weren't good enough to get into the dance, man. You know who was good enough? You know who was good enough after we beat y'all head to head? Us. Us. Who eliminated you? Hunnets. Let me let we're gonna finish this right now. We're gonna finish this right now. And shout out to Raider Alex. Who eliminated who eliminated you guys? Right. I thought so. Y'all got sent home packing. Sent home sad. I thought so, man. I thought so. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. But listen, you guys, we still got over 380 of you guys in the chat. So please, if you are new, hit that sub button, hit that like button. 
all that good stuff because we got a lot of freaking writer content to go over and um and, and look at and there's a lot of stuff coming in the future we got a lot of stuff that we want to do on this channel and that we're going to do on this channel so please if you're new hit that sub button and join the family man but that is going to conclude tonight's show um Hector, I think Graf is thinking of going live, so we'll see. I'm not too sure, though, but again, if you're new, hit that sub button, hit that like button, all that good stuff. Uh, I love you guys, Red Nation. Join the family, but I'm going to head out for tonight. If, if there is any breaking news, like, and I mean breaking news. I'm not talking about going out and signing some fucking fourth string long snapper. If there is some news, I will pull up, whether it's a live, whether it's a, a, a quick video, I am going to do something. But please, like I said, on your way out, hit that sub button. Show me some love. Um, shout out to my guy, Junior. He says, uh, the Iceman sent, <laughs> sent, sent them to the couch. Facts. Facts, Junior. Appreciate you, my man. Um, my man, Char Charmin City says, boat down simple as that but again i always say this to end my show everybody stay safe have a blessed night and peace y'all love you